Muscle speeds. So let's check in then and have a look at the. Oh, it's bad! No! Yeah, but you're gonna get to do your numbers once again, but banned away here by Najin White Shield along with Maokai for Cloud9, taking away Alistair, taking away Zillion as well. Well, at least we know Cinder was a smart band. Right yeah. there. But they did their research good. too. He was like, hmm, 2,500, yeah. that's way too fast. <laughs> it makes it a little <laughs> scary for Cloud9 to actually find fights if they do want to go with Eliminations Janna once again. But remember, this is against Gorilla, the guy who wanted to show the world how to play Janna. We'll see you there, though, because, you know, he's definitely not been sad about going onto that Thresh. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that Cloud9 actually having both Zillion and Alice are banned against them in their previous two games. And today they say, well, we actually don't want to play them anyway, so blue side. Uh, we'll just ban it's, them out. It's yeah. a big blue side ban there. And the final ban will actually be Lee Sin. No final ban there for Najin White Shield, which is an interesting So issue. were they docked a ban? Not that I know of. I yeah, we weren't, we weren't notified that they were docked a ban. On one of their bans. So. And you said earlier on that Zed was going okay. to be a big one in this one, and that was left open, and Shield first pick it. Similar right. to what we saw earlier with Dadek. So interesting, we were just notified they for sure were not Dr. Ban. They passed on that on purpose. They ban out the Syndra, and they take the Zed. So the overlap they decide to take, they ban out the one that they don't have an overlap on, and we will see the pools of these mid laners being crucial in this matchup. Well, first off, I like the fact that Medios was able to lock down Kha'Zix. I feel like Kha'Zix and Lee Sin are the two big junglers here at the World Championship. They get the only one left available. I'm also curious about whether High will break out Fizz. It's something he's put a fair amount of practice in. I've never really seen him have a great game on it, but a lot of people trained it to play against Zed. Well, if you're throwing out possibilities there for High, he's also he's played Kha'Zix played in the game. mid lane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you, you made a really good point, though. With Lee Sin already banned and Kha'Zix locked in, that's the jungler that they probably want to go with. I has not played mid lane Kha'Zix in a long time. So on the other side then for White Shield, picking up Rise here. We'll also ah. add Gorilla on Thresh. We heard a bit uh, before we even said it in our in the last game as well that we saw Shield in that now people have been talking about the Janna and the Nami from Gorilla, but his Thresh has been so good. Better than his Janna because <laughs> we honestly, they're undefeated. He's made so many clutch hooks. He was one of the sole reasons they made it back in that first game of the day against Alliance yeah. is finding hooks. And it's such a playmaking champion that uh, top level players can really excel on. The analyst was just talking about it. So many of these really top level supports making plays after plays with Thresh. He has so many options with his kit. So Cloud9 then, Lulu gonna be locked in yep. along with Nami. Tristana protection right here yeah. coming in. They've got double support, semi supports already locked in. I wonder if they, they have Oriana two the threats already. So they can actually put their defenses on whichever of these threats is actually under fire here. They don't have to, you don't always have to shove everything onto Trist in the end game here. You can also use all these Ooh. shields to protect your Kha'Zix. Oh! Or Talon. That's the other thing. One thing about high How champion. Into Zed? I guess so. Pro it's not that great of a mid lane matchup, but it's something that High has been training the crap out of. Pretty much all of his main mid laners outside of Syndra are all physical damage dealers, so they need to have that magic damage top lane, but into a Zed. Yikes. All right, so we can definitely say this for sure, not just to protect the Triss combo, because they've got two other very high value threats yeah. here. This is a three squishy threat to support system here from Cloud9. This combo takes a lot of precision to pull off. This is going to be, this is going to take a lot of very crisp communication and crisp team fighting from Cloud9 to pull this off. And are you going to then put forward the argument that Cloud9, if any team were to do that, are possibly that team? Yes. Especially from <laughs> North America. I mean, I like, Good. I have to look Good at White Shield's composition as well. With the first pick Zed, it is a scary amount of pick composition, but they're super late game scaling. Yes, they have Rise in the top lane, but Trist versus Corky, it does seem like they might actually get outscaled a bit. And so here's the thing. These two assassins that Cloud9 have picked actually work really well together because Talon is actually sort of a team fight oriented assassin. He's yep. not like Zed, who definitely thrives on that split pushing. Talon actually can have a huge impact on team fights because he does so much AoE. So if he jumps in, does his AoE burst, Kha'Zix can clean up. They've got Tristana firing from the back for late game insurance. 
so many options here from Cloud9. Let's get into it, though. Well, remember, we'll be checking in on how you guys are voting during the game, so continue to tweet at LOL Esports and use the hashtag NWSWIN or C9WIN for who you think will prevail. But for now, we are going to get into game. It's Najin White Shield versus Cloud9. Basically, the game right now to seal who's going to be sat at the top of the group. I also got a last little bit of information about White Shield's missed ban. We have translators actually listening into their champion select as well, and apparently they were discussing the ban, couldn't decide on one, so just left it. Hey, sometimes no decision is better than a bad decision. But with bans, you know, they didn't want to ban their own champion. That's one thing. There's a lot of power bans that get traded back and forth. Do you ban Rise? Do you ban Zed? They end up getting both of them, and those have been bans in the past. All right, let, yeah, let's see how that matchup does turn out, because as we heard uh, emphatically from Prawley on the desk, very difficult matchup here for Talon. Small, small margin for error. Uh, High can pull it off. This is not like a hard counter, but there is a small margin for error. High has stepped up in huge ways, say his teammates, since that North American LCS playoff defeat to TSM. They do get scouted by a nice ward there, so White Shield will have an early game edge here in that regard. Spotted them coming back out of the jungle though, so White Shield know that they're actually safe in there. We'll see if that actually influences where Watt will be starting. We also see Zephyr and Gorilla starting fairly well pushed up this lane. This could be interesting Ooh. if Cloud9 decide to face check in. So he's standing here to see if there will be that blue invade, to see if there is that swap up top and late side blue invade. Najin White Shield. Looks like they're actually going to try and start here for a watch. I wonder if they saw that ward go down. I don't think so. Well, they saw them coming in. Could probably surmise from that one. As now they see him in lane. Gorilla, yeah, will actually show himself there as well. They were waiting for quite a while inside of that brush, but it will be a normal 2v2 start here. So I guess we can stay there and talk about this lane matchup. Yeah. We say it's normal, but this is actually the first time Cloud9's decided to go for a 2v2. They've done so much swapping, both in the North American playoffs and so far in this group stage. We'll have to see how this Trist Nami plays out. And you can see, Gorilla and, and Zeppa were up in the lane just in case there was a lane swap. They kind of expected it from Cloud9 because they've done, they've done it so often. Um, they were ready to pull those minions and get them to focus to push the minion way back. Um, and that's also maybe why uh, the rest of the members were sitting up by that blue. But Cloud9 this time around, not going for the lane swap. Nami does help out Trist a lot in the lane phase, but early shove here and an early hook. And that's that's going to be good it. here for White Shield. Sneaky losing half of his health bar instantly as White Shield hit level two. There is Cloud9 getting themselves up to level two as well. Meteos may be called in and Watch is actually already down on this bottom side. It would be an incredibly dangerous and also out of character gank for Meteos if he actually tries to gank this lane early on. I think he's just going to try and get a bit of vision control and go back to farming. That's generally what he likes to do is just let the other jungler try his first gank and when his laners dodge the gank, he then has an edge on the enemy jungler. So far, High is giving as good as he gets in this lane. Now, he has started with the Crystalline Flash, so he doesn't run Oom. Um. He can use uh, his abilities to trade more effectively. He tries to get minions in with uh, the harass when he throws out his rake. Or tries to get harass in with his minions when he throws it out. Two for one. Currently very even as well is that lane. One lane that's not quite as even at this point though is that top lane. We'll visit that in just a moment as we see Watch coming around from the vision of Cloud9. They see Watch looping in there so they're going to be aware that they could be in danger here, possibly. Watch is going all the way up and we'll get a very deep ward inside of Cloud9's jungle. So, super early on, Midos doesn't actually want to fight Watch unless he has, you know, some big uh, vision advantage on him and yeah. he can get the jump. Or if he has backup. Um, so, later on, he'll be fine and he can outscale. But, early on, uh, doesn't want to take those one versus ones because if the police hits that cocoon, it's going to be devastating. Yeah, they're basically just trading pink wards, or sorry, trading deep wards on the map here. It's not unlike Cloud9 to almost sacrifice one lane for the benefit of the other. Uh, this game, very early on, they are definitely favoring Balls' side with that deep ward because they know the Sneaky Lemonation are going to be playing passive for most of that lane. 
since they know balls will be pushed up against save the majority of the time, the deep wards are much more important on that side. Oh, here comes the hook from Gorilla, but it was pretty much a mile away from Sneaky. Aimed off to the right-hand side, Sneaky just basically standing still there and that hook just whistling on by and allows Sneaky to actually get a good Watch thinking of about an invade. Oh, they're pinging for the gank up top on Balls. Watch is going to go through Cloud9's jungle. The deep ward didn't help. Yeah. Balls is going to be in such a deep ward trouble. that it missed the ward in what would be a likely scenario. Oh, here comes Safe. Got a flash. Watch going to come through into this one. They're going to wait until the cocoon comes out. It's a good flash from Balls. His Pretty lane. much a textbook escape. That's the best he could have done. That problem is now his lane is shoved, and so Save up here. Uh, should be able to. Oh, never mind. He's, he's, got an ex, he's got an extra ranged minion. It's fine for balls. It's fine. Doesn't wow. have to burn his teleport either because he doesn't want to overextend in that lane. He brings two wards for himself. One is pink. Medios also takes that opportunity because Watch shows top. He invades the bottom side jungle. Watch his ward though, sees him. Ooh, that's Looking to counter. Dangerous. Better get that quick. <laughs> nah, Watch does not come up. Actually headed towards that bottom side of the map where, to be fair, Sneaky and Elimination have pushed out a little bit from that turret. There are actually no wards in position, so not being able to get up far enough to get that vision Whoa, down. They see spot watch coming in. There's a flash into the play. Can they lock one down? Balls is going to TP in, but Elimination is going down. His first blood for Zephyr. Balls is there. Oh! But Sneaky going aggressive, looking for Zephyr. There is Meteos as well. Gorilla's low. He will be the focus, and Balls will get the kill back. Meanwhile, Save finishes off Sneaky on the top side. He's kind of in no man's land now, though. He's got to escape. It's a 2v1 for White Shield so far, but this fight is not over yet. Zed trying to mirror high. It's going to be a fight. Oh, there's the death mark coming down. Save will move in from the side. Goom going to get some decent damage down, but he's being burnt down by the Ignite. He's able to escape, though, in the end. Save did a big loop, and he also lives. High used his ultimate in lane, so he didn't have it there, or they would have been able to turn around on Goon. That's why Goon had the confidence to chase down high and open up an escape route for save. That fight in the bottom lane, though, was so close. The fact that White Shield came out 2v1 for that one could have very well gone the other way. Let's check this one out real quickly. Obviously, Gorilla starts it off nice. They get enough damage down on the Lemon Nation. He was close to being able to escape this one. Such an amazing glitter lands by Balls here. I thought they were going to get more oh. casualties, but Sneaky is kind of caught out a bit by himself. Gorilla once again plays on this Thresh. A crucial pick for Najin White Shield. Gorilla, because of the initiative that he took in the bottom lane trade, even because even with their teleport coming in later, they still come out ahead. And a 14 CS lead is what remains of that one. Lead for Zephyr, who is slightly ahead here at five, but for all intents and purposes, it is level that as Goom gets the blue buff gifted over to him by Watch. See what High decides to go for. The pickaxe star actually for High. I do have to say, the biggest beneficiary of everything that happened was Save in the top lane. The last of the top lane carries on Rise. First off, Watch's gank early on relieved the pressure Balls was placing on him, and then when he could teleport down to get a kill as well. Considering his early game disadvantage, he is sitting pretty up there and primed to carry. He's already got his tier and his catalyst. Building up for him only eight and a half minutes into this game. Balls back into that lane. Of course, he's going for his Athenes first. Talked about high going for that pickaxe, and actually he's going to go pretty damn aggressive there onto Goon. Is that a signal that he wants to head back? Save again, throwing out the ultimate onto Balls in the top. He's feeling a lot more confident now. Yep, he's got his mana stacking items. He's got that kill you talked about. Balls did get one as well, though, so we're evened up on that. I just want to go over that exchange that we just saw mid, though. Hi actually uh, spamming his ultimate here in lane. As we said before, he used it in lane before the last exchange for lane control. He gets a lot of damage down on the Zed, but also clears the minion wave very quickly every time he uses his ultimate as well, shoving in Zed. And with the blue buff, it's on a remarkably low cooldown, only 62 seconds, so basically a minute, and you can see he almost has it back up. And it's something we even saw Goom using uh, when he was on Talon against Baker. Oh, save actually has no flash here after that last encounter down in the bottom lane. Meteos waiting inside of the tribe. So there is a ward there, but 
Save needs to be careful as to how far up he goes. There is a step forward and Mitos decides that is going to be the time for him to come in. Can he lock down Save? The slow will come in there. Will they even dive this one? There is a wild growth coming in together. Knock up. There is the lockdown coming back and Mitos taking a lot of damage. Will they get the kill? It's a pretty common Cloud9 trade. A 10 minute gank up top isn't worth against because the enemy team can just take the dragon on you. They're trading, trying to shut down Save for a big objective. Excuse me, it was Pawn. <laughs> But yeah, they are going to trade that for the Dragon here. Najin White Shield able to secure that simple exchange of jungle pressure. So, you've hit the 10 minute mark already. So one and a half thousand gold lead for the Korean side of Najin White Shield. His bottom lane still being held by Zephyr. Thanks in part to Gorilla's amazing play so far. I think we've seen one hook that's gone wide, the rest have been pretty much either dodge with the jumps away from Sneaky or landed to set things up. That might even happen now once again as Zephyr just stepping up there to put as much deep damage down as he can, which will include single auto attack this time around only onto that tower. Meanwhile, Goon's got some free time in that middle lane because we did see High recalling to pick himself up the tier map. So really, it's just Cloud9 trying to stall this one out a little bit. If we're going into a National White Shield versus Cloud9 game, we can't expect fireworks. The way these teams have actually been able to win games has been through fairly slow, methodical manners. At the moment, though, the lanes are going in White Shield's favor, which is much different than their alliance matchup. It will be explosive, though. With the combat, oop, Cloud9 are running. Who's going to go in there, but High being invisible dodges most of the damage to come out, but. Goom says, no, I think I'm done in this one. I am running back away. The Ignite was put down by High. Meanwhile, Gorilla had also come around the side to maybe try and get involved, as had Watch and Zephyr had even moved up that river area. Nothing really on the table for them, though, so no kills will go down in that mid lane. Yeah, Cloud9's bottom lane's leaking a little bit right now. I'm wondering when Zeph and Gorilla are going to start putting pressure on the rest of the map, or if they're going to be able to clean that bottom lane quickly, because Gorilla's going to try and make an impact. Now he's going mid. mid. He's making his impact now. Oh, they're going to go in. Can they hook him? No. Flash actually going to be forced from high. So, I mean, moving in for that one, forcing out the summoner spell. A win. We Nagin saw White exactly this same thing from Najin White Shield's bottom lane last time. Corky Thresh, they got an early lead. Gorilla started roaming. He got mobility boots, and he affected the rest of the map. Uh-oh, sneaky cup. Oh, in fact, Lemon Nation could actually be in trouble here. The hook will land into the box. He's slowed for days. The cocoon follows. There is oh. an exhaust down, and Watch can't get through. Luckily for him, the white comes up there, and he's able to back off. Gorilla might not be so lucky, but the TP from safe is going to come down. Sneaky less than half HP. Balls is there as well. Oh! They finish him off. They do get one. Save is going to die to the tower, though. And Balls somehow the two. still alive. Finally finished off. But Hyde comes down and he'll clean up that one. Gorilla needs to run as well. In a 5v4, Cloud9 trades the kills beautifully. And Meteos just now arrives. Said it was going to be explosive with the comp that Cloud9 are running. All very squishy, but high damage oh, output. Geez. And the dive there from Najin White Shield turned around very quickly. Gives also Cloud9 some control around this Dragon Pit. They do yeah. clear out the pink ward, but man, those deep wards. Najin White Shield invading really hard on this blue buff side of Cloud9. Gorilla, as we said, making play after play with this Thresh. Flashing that Nami title wave. Right after I said it will be a passive game, this happens. Obviously, it looked a little confusing that they backed off, but that's because the Balls teleported came in behind the fight. He arrives just about the same, same time Rise does, and because of that, ah. <laughs> that's bad. Another kill. Ah, another oh, kill. No. It's Lemon Nation <laughs> caught out of position there. I mean, there's three men on top of him. Can't really afford to go through there. He does also have to just leap away. Means that blue buff is going to be stolen away by Najin White Shield. And look at the allocation of wards here. Najin White Shield, they litter the blue side jungle with wards, as we said, and they continue to fight in that side of the jungle. Cloud9 have three pink wards on the top side of the map, yeah. but there's nothing going on up there. There are no fights. That is not the battlefield. And what's going to happen with mid-game dragon control at this point? It definitely seems like White Shield is going to continue to take those. And how is Cloud9 going to make up for that gold deficit? Yes, it's nice that they're trying to let Balls have success in that lane to shut down Rise, but when you have a solo lane Lulu and a Trist, 
you kind of have to help Trist out in the laning phase a little bit. I'm scared here for Sneaky falling too far behind. Especially when he's against a Corky, a Trinity Force Builder, a Caster AD carry. This is going to be a huge, huge boon for Nat and White Shield in the coming team fights. They've got this tremendous damage output with the Trinity Force Corky versus the Tristana sitting on Avarice Blade and pieces of items. It definitely seems like Cloud9 may be pulling off the top lane strategy a little bit. It's going to be hard pressed though because there's so many deep wards already in their jungle they cannot possibly clear these out before the next dragon spawns and they will be at mercy to Thresh. And if well, I was just about to praise Gorilla as he comes through, not quite landing there. As Cloud9 were just trying to clear out those wards, but Gorilla's hit clutch hooks today. And now that we are having more team fights, we see the armor focus here from Save. He's going straight into that glacial shroud. This is such a scary team fight for Cloud9, though. Trinity Force, as you mentioned, completed, whereas Sneaky's sitting on components. Part way to a static shiv, very far away from his Infinity Edge. Kai would have to play this team fight exquisitely. Save already has his Rod of Ages. It feels like Shield is a stronger team fight. Oh! oh getting caught from this one. The damage is massive. Deathmark actually going down. Gorilla will fall though to Sneaky. But what can they do? We see Watch and Zephyr going deep. Sneaky goes low, tries to jump away from things. Gets away, but Meteos will be given up. And that is going to be a three for one. They lose the support, and but they take top, middle, and jungle. That's going to be Dragon, definitely, for White as we can see there, Zephyr, huge amounts of DPS going out, claims a red buff for himself, and they've got control, they can shove the waves up. Najin White Shield paying attention to the power spikes. Trinity Force for Zephyr, save, even though he wasn't immediately in the fight, could make it over. It was time to fight. They just break this game wide open after that one. All right, so let's see here. Hyde does go for the 100% on Gorilla. This is the support, though, so taking him yeah. out did not really affect the team fight. They did draw out his exhaust, but after Hyde uses everything to take down fresh support, there's so much damage left here from Najin White Shield, they take over. No. Najin White Shield, after that alliance came, obviously said, guys, let's not do that one again. Let's not yeah. do it the hard way. Sat eight, five up in kills, but it's the goal. That's the real big difference in this one. And White Shield gonna go for a hook. Camilla just a little bit wide on that one once again. White Shield definitely picked a much stronger mid game this time around. And they're gonna try and close the deal, which is something Alliance could not do. Sneaky was also harassed down at the very beginning of that fight. Didn't get to add much to it. Let's see about this top lane focus though. Video sitting on that pink ward. That was a short jump. Everybody's moaning, but it, it's an unevolved wing. Yeah, he did clip the end of that little round there. Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh I actually got there. aggressive after that. He'll be lured into it. Actually has to flash, though. Where's the least going to come down? Right on top of him. Watch gets the execute, but here comes the TP. Paul's going to join in the fight. Watch us low. What can Paul's do? He has to use his own wild growth on himself, and he's going to fall. Goog, meanwhile, in between the remaining three, will drop off, but save keeps going. There is Corky joining in. They get the tower, but Najin low. Why is Cloud9 continually fighting? They are not at their power points yet. But Kai decided to go in, immediately flashed away, and everything else just collapsed upon them. Cloud9 loses another fight because they are behind. Yeah, they keep fighting. It's kind of snowballing against them. They got that feeling that they're behind and they didn't want to give up much more. You can tell, though, Kai, he doesn't want to let any aggressive move go. And even though it missed, the, or there was no follow-up yeah. on this hook, decided to jump back in. I mean, that ward, by the way, did not, it didn't see Watch coming down. They know how strong Zephyr is at this point. He jumps straight into his face. And Sneaky, if he was a Trinity Force Corky right now, of course that fight would have turned, but it just takes more time for Trist to get in there. Rise can counter the Lulu teleport very easily. Balls basically teleports in to die. And Najin White Shield takes an even greater edge. Let's see if Cloud9 hit Turtle. They go aggressive down bottom on Goom get his flash, but that's all. Focus up top here. Now, Shield are going to answer. Swing everybody up top, take that turret, and claim this red buff side for themselves. Try and choke Cloud9 now out of this game. Wards down. In fact, if you look at the map, 
That is a lot of wards down for Najin White Shield right now. <laughs> All five. The bottom side and the top side. You can see the path yep. they've taken through. That tower's going down too. And it's not just Gorilla. Yes, Gorilla's doing a magnificent job of controlling the map, but it's also watch with the side stone. Here's the one versus one. Oh, he's gonna come out on top of it. He's gonna be the death mark, but Ignite is down and it's great. He upgraded his sweeper to get the Oracle Lens so early on to go for that one versus one. It but does afford him the experience yeah. of getting winning that one versus one, but they still trade. That's actually really good for High. He gets a shutdown bonus, and maybe he can use his talent for a team fight victory. But the global gold disadvantage, and honestly, the power of Save and Zephyr at the moment, just seems like much more than Cloud9 can deal with. Definitely is too much to handle mid lane. Yeah, the gold disparity across the board is pretty devastating. Top lane. AD carries both of us. 2,000 gold behind their opposite number. And we're closing in on a 10,000 gold lead here for Najin White Shield. And that's with just that inner ring, uh, sorry, outer ring of Torix going down. Plus, of course, that one here in the middle that we're looking at right now. We've got 1 minute and 40 until the next dragon comes up. I think it's going to be a case of having to maybe give this one up for Cloud9. Yes, please, yeah. at this point. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll lose the game before 30 minutes. They may already have lost this one, depending on how well White Shield knows how to close. Sneaky needs a lot of time to get more and more items. Infinity Edge, Berserker Greaves, he's probably going to even need a Last Whisper, since Watch and Save have started working towards some major armor itemization already. A clear item path for them with two AD Assassins. Tristana. Small win there for Cloud9, both skill shots missing, but that was one ward in 10 that are on their side of the jungle. At least 10. That's a whole lot down there. We do see Goon just doing a lap. He was obviously pushing that top wave out. Actually, we'll wait here inside of the enemy jungle, just looking by that raid camp to get some free damage down. Meanwhile, Watch was determined to come around and get this pink ward. We'll finally be able to do so. And Black Shield now strangling the bottom side. And you can really see Najin's focus on war control and commitment to it. A uh, minute ago, there were all five pink wards down for White Shield. They're currently still having all five down, yet they have four pink wards in their inventory just in case one gets taken down or if they need to move their vision. They are just maximizing their ward limits on the map. And not only is it a double sight zone, He's upgraded to a Ruby Sight Zone as well, so he can stay out on the map longer and has still have wards. Yeah, save is gonna just turn around and kill Meteos because it's just that strong right that's now. Bad. Yeah, that's really bad. For all the attention that Cloud9 put into trying uh -oh. to shut save down, it has failed and it has cost them Sneaky's farm as well. It's Three, one of those games two, where everything goes wrong. What? Oh! oh! It was, ah! <laughs> the play coming in at the last second there. Pink Ward goes down to spot high, and they're going to keep chasing here. The Rune Prison's going to come up in a second. There it is, and the finisher from save. Up at 5-2-2 two, two after 22 minutes on rise. They should push in now. Uh, looks like they already have control down bottom. That's where they're making their move. This turret going to go down to Corky here, trying to put on work, but they go mid. Sneaky, I feel that he may be falling prey once again and the death mark does go down. It's Watch actually that finishes off the kill. Meanwhile, Zephyr yep. has been pushing that bottom lane and across the map, White Shield are just demolishing Cloud9. They got the kills and the turret down at the exact same time. They are not letting this mid-game window go to waste. There's no way they're going to wait around yeah. for Tristana to scale up here. Najin White Shield pushing it very, very hard. And Najin Shield is kind of proving that they can play multiple styles. They had the late game turtle against Alliance when Alliance had the mid game composition. They probably also watched a little bit of Blue's late game composition fail to Fnatic and they say, you know what, this late game thing is a little bit too risky. They go for a mid game composition that still has some strong late game insurance with Rise, and they are just destroying Cloud9 here 24 minutes. In. So, yeah, I mean, if we look at the actual goal totals, it's not a pretty picture for Cloud9. The only turret left outside of the base is in that top lane, which itself has already faced quite a lot of pressure. We still see, I believe, four out of five pink wards are still alive on the map for Najin White Shield. On T1, 
continuing that vision dominance, making it so uh -oh. hard for Cloud9 to actually walk away. And Pink Ward is down. Pink. Kai is going to get the support from Bolt here, but Save just going to blow him to pieces. Sneaky comes in, actually blows him back into the lane. Slow comes down. TP, no, can't get away from the wild throw. Turns back to do the damage onto Bolt and Cloud9. Gang up for it the single all kill. Five of them. And it's going to take their base. Has been pushed. Yeah. That is just a bit of an overcommit there by Cloud9. They had a mission to kill Save. Mission However, <laughs> yeah, that, I guess. that goal not working out. No. Oh, uh, dear. They lose the middle inhibitor turret. They're going to lose the top inhibitor turret. One of the inhibitors may go down here as well. And maybe even worse if Gorilla can land a hook. Goong in the meantime, still hammering away. Sneaky is pushing the bottom lane. Going to get an inner tower for that one. But there is Goong going on to Lemon Nation. Where's the splat? There it is, and he goes back at Cloud9 left. Oh, where did he go? Okay, back to the middle lane, still alive. They could even get both in him with the kill. Yeah. They will. They're so far ahead. Yeah, that is a case of winning the battle for Cloud9 with their mission to kill save, but losing the war. Their entire base is demolished. That's wide open for Nats and Light Shield. At least he didn't get away with that teleport. I mean, that would have just been <laughs> yeah. a disaster. At the end of the day, though, High on the run yet again. One Cloud9. more missile. Nope. is out of options here in a lot of different ways. It's crazy, too, because imagine how the, this group is going out, and it's what you touched on earlier, Kobe, in not being able to judge these incredibly competitive groups off of single games. Cloud9 looked really good against Alliance. Alliance had a really good mid-game against White Shield, and then Cloud9 had a horrendous mid-game here against White Shield, who's going to be 3-0 in this group. Baron is going down here, no doubt about that one. No one around from Cloud9 for even a sneaky attempt to get that one away. In fact, Goom almost stopped from recalling. Even that went wide. Certainly not looking like Cloud9 game. There's more items just going to be collected in. And, well, there's a stark difference between these two lineups. He just will be getting himself a blue buff for what good that will do. They, of course, have two inhibitors down with those super minions streaming in. Only the bottom lane still has a turret and the inhib left remaining. But if White Shield wish to take that one, I think that they will just go in there and take it. Yeah, inhibitor number three should not be far away. There is so much armor on the side of White Shield. Balls is not a big enough threat on Lulu. Rise or Elise can probably just walk into the turret However, that's actually a really clever catch there by Cloud9, being way further out than not sure why she was expected to be. Saves it here to save the day, though. Oh, there is a tidal wave, but the death mark will come through. Wild Grove comes in. Oh, Whoa. Goom tries to get out. Didn't get the kill. And will fall to Sneaky. They hold. About the only possible way they could hold as well. They get a catch. <laughs> and then they catch Goong in some overaggression. If all White Shield did was slowly move as a five-man unit and wait for the Super Minions to draw the attention of two people on Cloud9, the third inhibitor would have been comically easy to attain. But they didn't, and now Cloud9 gets to devote all their attention to wave clearing the Super Minions, and White Shield can't push with three. Yep, wait around for round two here inside the base. They still can't really venture out onto the map. Pretty much it. Entire map now, imagine shield territory. <laughs> That's a scary sight, that vision toggle right there. Yeah. Cloud9 literally sees nothing of the map. Oh, sorry, I lied. There is one ward down by the bottom of river. For what good that will do at this point. Didn't even get swept yet, so they got that going for them. That's Which is nice. That is nice. Cloud9, they really needed the turtle to up. They need a few more minutes for their inhibitors to come back up. I don't think we're going to see National White Shield get caught out yet again. If somehow they could force the fight the instant Najin White Shield groups, that would make it so the Super Minions don't necessarily have time to finish their Nexus turrets. But looking at that wave in the top lane, Kai actually has to go there right now, which is bad timing considering White Shield is knocking on the bottom lane door. Oh, Hulk coming through. Doesn't get the fish though. Lemon Nation survives for now. Just waiting for that next minion wave. That top lane wave would kill their Rolling through. 
Yeah, they're gonna just go straight in on towards that inning. Torrent the hook again in this time for Sneaky doesn't connect. Torrent goes down. Lemon Nation being caught out on one side. He is surely gonna fall here. It will be Goon to pick that one up. Inhibitor number three is gonna go down. The super minions are already through there and taking the tower. I go, hook comes down onto balls as well. He will use the wild growth. That won't be enough though to keep him alive. And White Shield just ripping through both Cloud9 and their base here as they go. Both Nexus turrets are gonna go down. It looks like Safe wants a bit more of the action here. Will be able to get in there. It's actually Goon that steals the one kill. He takes down Sneaky and Najin White Shield finish off the game here in classy style. A very one-sided encounter. Brilliant performance from Shield. And they take command of their group now. 3-0, they have beaten every team in the group in their first matchup. This one, very convincing. They struggled a little bit against Alliance, but as far as their ultimate goal, which is advancing through this group, they're looking pretty good. It's funny as well. I think most people, if they were to look at the three Korean teams, would look at blue and white to go through their groups without problems, and maybe white shield the ones that were beatable on paper. So far, Imagine White Shield looking very, very strong. Not untouchable, though. Alliance pushing them a very long way in that previous encounter. But we've got the points on the board, and that's what counts after your first three games. And Cloud9 trying something we have not seen from them before. This three very squishy threat team with the double supports not working out for them in group stages here. And that's the beauty of the fact that everyone plays everyone twice, right? So uh -huh. you can come in in the first game and say, we've got this curveball strategy that might work out for us that we might be able to catch them off guard with yes okay if you lose you're, you're losing a game in the group stage but you can always revert it and change it for the next time that you meet and i definitely feel like when cloud nine watches that game again they're going to be very disappointed themselves because